Simba here has some dog aggression issues. Now, this all these all started after he moved here about a month ago, or how long ago? Seven months Seven ago. Seven months ago. Now, uh, one of the things I'm gonna show you, just to, is I want you to see, it's easier to see from this angle. You can see all of the areas where he's losing fur. Now, I think this might be a food allergy issue, but just like us, if we have a chronic issue that's causing us pain, even if it's a low level pain, I actually have a pinched nerve in my shoulder, and it's like a three, I can deal with the three pain. But after a three pain for like nine, nine days, I started getting snippy and cranky with people that I'm normally very happy and generous with. So it can be the same sort of thing for your dog. If your dog has a, uh, uh, an allergen or something like that, that can impact its behavior. And so I'm not saying that that's the reason for it, but it did happen kind of around the same time. Now, uh, I would recommend, I recommend the guardian actually go back to the food she used to feed him. She he used to live on the East Coast. Might be allergens, might be pollen, it might be something like that. But since uh, there's a special food she got on the East Coast that she can't get here, I suggest you try that for a month, getting that food again and see if that clears it up. Uh, but it's no fun to have uh, you know, allergies or any sort of chronic issue. And if your dog has a chronic issue, that can absolutely influence his behavior. Now, in case that is not the case, and either way, we want to give the dog, a, uh, the guardian, uh, the ability to redirect the dog's attention away from other dogs. And I like to accomplish this through a focus exercise, which is what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So I'm a right-handed person. I have a handful of the high-value Tricky Trainer treats in my left hand, and I have one of them in my right hand. Now I put the dog in between my knees, shoulder width apart uh, for a dog this size. If it's a little dog, you might have to move your feet out to the side to get your knees lower. So I'm going to put my hands in fists on my knees. Now I do it, I'm going to hold one of them like this, I'm going to make it look like they're fists. Now you can see he's going straight to where the smell is strongest, which is my hands. I, and you see a little bit of a drool, I'm, that's normal. I'm waiting for him to look up at me in the face. Now I'm not actually going to, there we go, focus. I'm not luring him. If you talk to a dog trainer, I'm a behaviorist, but if you talk to a dog trainer, they say, hold the treat up here and get him to look at you. I don't want him to do that. I want him to look voluntarily and I want to reward him for doing that so he has an incentive to do that. Now imagine that there's a tunnel of vision right here. So if he's looking up at me, I want to invade the tunnel of vision. So uh, the whole point of this is once he looks up at me, I want him to continue doing so. So I'm going to raise it about four inches in front of my face once he looks at my face with his eyes. I'm watching his eyes right now. Focus. And I say the word focus every time it goes in his mouth. Anytime you're going to give a dog a treat, you should say the, focus, uh, the command word right after it goes in their mouth. What we, should, what, we should, what we should see is he should start looking up at me faster and faster. Now it takes a couple treats, focus, before he realizes that's the case. Because he's going to just try to go get it because dogs are just like, I'm able-bodied, I'll go get it myself. But force or trying to take is not going to work in this endeavor. So the lesson I'm trying to teach him is that forcing or trying to take is not going to work, but as soon as you look to the human for assistance or guidance, the human will pay you. Focus. So keep, once the treat is here, keep it here. I have some people that will give the dog the treat like this or they hold it up over here. You want to hold it up about four inches in front of your nose and go straight to his mouth. Focus. And watch his eyes. It doesn't have to be a, a direct eye contact. It can just be a quick look. Focus. That was about six seconds. Focus, about five seconds. Focus, 12, a little regression there. Focus, two or three seconds. So you see he's getting fat, better and better at this. Now when I'm doing this, I want to have two, one second movement, one second movement for both of these two movements. The first movement, when I raise it, is always going to be one second. Always one second. Second movement, two seconds. Focus. Eventually, when I first do this, I have about 10 to 12 treats, and offer all 10 or 12 treats, the first couple times I do it, focus. I just do one second, one second. Once I've done it a couple times, when I, a couple times I mean all 12 of the treats, and he starts looking at me right away, focus. Now, that was too early, I should have said focus after. 
then I want to start adding in second, uh, second on the second movement. Focus. So at first, all 12 treats, one second, one second, and then after I've done it a couple times, then one second, two seconds for all 12 treats. Focus. Then eventually, I'm going to do it where it's going to be one second, 20 seconds. See, I'm keeping his gaze at my face. He's really looking at the treat. Focus. Now, you're not going to get to 20 seconds right away. You're going to have to work your way up to that. So at first, like I said, about two, you want to do this at least three times a day. And it'd be nice if your roommates could do this with them as well. Now, he's, mm -hmm. as you can see, he's going to dro drool a little bit. That's okay. Uh, just keep your hands on your knees. Don't have them over your knees. And hold the treat in a way I'm holding it here in my hand. But he was, you can see, I mean, this is where he was looking, but he wasn't mm -hmm. able to get to it. He could kind of access it a little bit, but he couldn't quite take it. Mm -hmm. And that way I can pop it right. It's about somebody go hold it like this, and they go to give it to him, they go like this. Mm -hmm. It slows down your timing. You have a window of three seconds to correct or reward your dog. Mm -hmm. So, and three seconds is the maximum. A third of a second should be your goal. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, all, tw all 12 treats, one second, one second for the first day, maybe two days, mm -hmm. then one second, two seconds, once he starts pretty much staring at you right away the whole time. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna gradually elongate that. So it's gonna take about a week to 10 days, but eventually you can say focus. Focus. And he's gonna be able to give you that look. All right, so this you wanna practice inside the house. We're in the mm -hmm. living room. The other dog, uh, who actually he, uh, growled out a little bit when there was a treat around. And again, I think it was just uh, for, uh, just for the treat. Um, basically was, uh, sorry, on, give me another minute. Um, basically, um, what we want to do is we want to practice inside so it's very easy for him. There's no distractions, mm -hmm. there's no other dog that I have to uh, defend it from. Mm -hmm. Now, eventually it would be nice if you did it with both dogs in the room. Maybe you're doing it there with him and your other roommate's doing it with her dog here, mm -hmm. Button, who's an awesome dog. Okay, so once we can do it in the house and wherever you're at, you say focus, he looks up at you and for 20 seconds, he'll keep that stare. Mm -hmm. The next step is to go do it outside. Now do it outside when there are no dogs barking in the neighborhood, there's mm -hmm. nobody in the alley, there's nothing, it's an easy environment. Mm -hmm. At that point, I'm gonna go back to one second, one second. And then I'm gonna keep doing that until I can go to, you know, eventually work our way back up to the 20 seconds the way we did here. Mm -hmm. Then the next step is to do the 20, do it on walks. Now when we're on walks, we're actually not going to be stopping Mm -hmm. going like this. Come here, buddy. Come. So what we'll do, I'm going to turn the light on, off. There we go. Come here, buddy. So as we're walking, we're going to say, focus, focus. As we're walking, we're just going to be holding it between him, our face and his and mm -hmm. delivering the treat. Now, we're, again, we want to do this when there are no people and no other dogs around on an actual walk. Mm -hmm. So we're building the behavior that we want through gradually and progressively more intense or more real-world situations. Now, eventually, when you get to the point where you have this down and you see another dog at the end of the block, it's walking towards you. Mm -hmm. Well, now you'll find that there's a distance. Now, it's going to depend on how the other dog acts. If the other dog is barking and lunging everywhere, he's going to be reacted to it at a much greater distance. If the dog's walking next to its guardian, it's very calm, it's not barking, it's not looking at him, that's going to help him. He'll probably be able to get that dog closer before he gets, starts getting growly. Dogs have three distance. Intimate space is a three foot bubble. Three feet to 11 feet is considered social space. Um, at, after 11 feet is considered public space. And just like us, we're more, very particular the closer people get to us. So you'll find a distance that that dog, need, that, you know, where he's gonna start reacting. Now the very first thing, and he was doing this a little bit earlier, is, is this is usually the first sign. Lowering our head and staring. Mm -hmm. So that's when you wanna say focus and get him mm -hmm. to look away at you. If he doesn't look away, then take him around a car, go around a building, around a shrub, something that's gonna block his vision. Increase mm -hmm. the distance between him and the other dog until you can get him to focus. Mm -hmm. So this way, when you're out walking and you see another dog, you say, focus, he looks up at you. Dogs can't multitask. So now he's looking at you, you're holding a treat, and this is why we go to 20 seconds, which gives us less time to hopefully pass the other dog. Mm -hmm. And not quite yet, buddy. Um, all right, now something else we do is while we're doing this, we're gonna, this is Santa Monica, we're gonna run into dogs all over the place and mm -hmm. we need a backup plan. So what I like to do is have a turn built into it. So when you're walking, let's say we walk on the right side. When I'm walking and I see another dog here, before the other dog becomes a threat, what I might do is just turn. When I turn, I hold the treat here. So as soon as he turns around, I give it to him and say turn. Mm -hmm. So to establish this, we want to first do this at times when there's no other dogs around when we're on the walk. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while there's no dogs, just like turn, half turn, and when he's turn around, let him take the treat and then say turn. Take two or three steps the other direction, then do another turn. So you're doing like a little oval U-turn 
mm -hmm. over and over again. We want to do it when there's nobody else around so that that's a normal thing for him. So when you do it, he doesn't think, oh, there's a dog here. Who, who's trying to mess with us? So he just gets used to it. So you use this as your backup plan until you have that 20 second uh, done. Now the very last stage, for a lot of dogs, just enforcing rules and petting with a purpose and passive training, all those things help the dog respect the human as an authority figure and takes away his feeling that he needs to guard the human. Mm -hmm. Also, like I said, I think it might be a dermatitis sort of situation. But if it continues, the next step that we would look for is a place where you can go where there is gonna be a path ahead of you where people are gonna be walking with dogs. Uh, the the uh, boardwalk for the beach would be a great place for it. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is a place that has a triangle of vision. So from in between my arms, I can see as a dog, I can see this triangle. Mm -hmm. But over here, maybe there's some shrubs or a building, and over here there's shrubs or a building. Mm -hmm. So people are, let's say, walking in this direction down the path. First thing I have to do is find the distance where my dog can sit and see the other dog walk by without being reactive. And again, this is mm -hmm. going to be relative to how the other dog's energy is. Mm -hmm. Let's say we're at 25 feet and I can get my dog to sit and watch those dogs walk by. So now he's not threatened by those dogs. Mm -hmm. So next time what we do is I have these treats with me. I put them in a sit here. And let's say the traffic flow is it's going to go both directions. But let's say it's just going this direction. Mm -hmm. I look over here through the shrubs and I can see someone walking and I can see that there's a, a dog in, involved. So what I do is as soon as that dog is about to come in the clearing, I turn my field of vision down to my dog. Now my dog's gonna be just kind of hanging out and all of a sudden he sees the other dog, he's gonna be like, he's gonna stop and stare at that dog. Mm -hmm. One, 1,000, two, 1,000. After waiting two seconds, if he doesn't do anything, then you're gonna basically give him the focus command. Mm -hmm. And then get him to look up at you and you're gonna go, give him the treat and say focus. So when he sees the other dog, we're gonna give him two seconds. If he doesn't, mm -hmm. then we're gonna cue the command. After we do this enough repetitions, He's going to see the other dog and he's going to look up at you automatically. Mm -hmm. As soon as he does this, we call this an autofocus. Mm -hmm. So what you should do is give him five treats. Focus, 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 focus. We're going to be saying, what the hell did I just do? Because I just got a plethora of treats and I want to be able to recreate that and get more of those. Mm -hmm. But now we're starting to associate. When you see another dog, if you look up at the human, the human will reward you. Mm -hmm. We're training the dog to display a different behavior than becoming aggressive with them. And mm -hmm. we're redirecting them. So once you get the dog that looks at the other dog and you get five of those in a row, mm -hmm. where the dog doesn't, you don't have to say focus, just looks up at you. Now you're ready to start closing the golf. So then I take one step closer to the path and then I keep repeating it until I get five times in a row where a dog shows up and he just looks up at me. Mm -hmm. This is a very progressive prog process and this, this last stage that I'm describing here, you might not need to use. This is something you wouldn't, wouldn't probably try for a month. But if your dog is still aggressive, this is the path you want to do. And eventually you're going to get closer and closer until you're, the path is right here. The mm -hmm. dog sees the other dog, looks right up at you, and gives you the autofocus over and over again automatically. Mm -hmm. So now we've uh, done a conditional, uh, uh, it's CER, uh, conditional emotional response. We're teaching the dog to look up at you as opposed to being aggressive towards the other dogs. Mm -hmm. Now, in conjunction with enforcing rules, boundaries, proper exercise, taking care of a skin irritation, Hopefully, this will solve the problem for good. This is the focus exercise, as well as a bonus of how you can add a little counter-conditioning to help your dog learn to look away instead of being reactive to other dogs.